Well, there was horrifying news this weekend from Rockville, Maryland, it's a suburb outside Washington. According to police there, a 14-year-old high school student was raped in the bathroom by two boys, 17-year-old Jose Montano and 18-year-old Henry Sanchez. That's bad enough, but it gets worse. Sanchez is an illegal alien here. He's been here seven months, has not been deported. Not only that, despite being the age of upperclassmen, both alleged rapists were classified as freshman ninth graders, and so they shared the same grade as their much younger victim. Brigitte Mulliken is a legal immigrant to the U.S. She's a resident of Rockville, and she's campaigned against that city becoming a sanctuary city. She joins us now. Brigitte, thanks all for coming on. Thank you for inviting the me. The sadness of all of this is that earlier this month, um, March, you wrote a letter to the mayor and the city council of, of Rockville saying this could potentially be a problem. We, uh, you obviously were horrified by this. How shocked yeah. were you, though? Well, we have a public. We had a public hearing. We had 88 people sign up. Ten of them actually left because it went too long. But I submitted a petition against it because there was a petition to recommend to the mayor and council to be, become a sanctuary city. Right. However, how the ordinance was written, it really didn't use that language they actually were saying is they wanted to have policy on how the Rockville Police Department should enforce the immigration law. And of course we know that Montgomery County is very liberal and I think that the city's going to follow their suit. The other problem is that the state is going forth with making it sanctuary state and yeah. Quite quite a few of us are upset about this. So you're an immigrant. I mean, you came to yes. this country from Europe as a child, and you wrote this. You said, our freedoms, because of this pros policy, our freedoms are in jeopardy if governments at whatever level decide to enforce only the laws they like and ignore the laws they do not like. If you don't like a law, work to change it. That seems like a, I mean, a basic understanding of the way our government's supposed to work. Well, we had a lot of Chinese people speak, and, and they, they said they had to wait in line to come here, and they have issues with the fact that, you know, they came here for law and order and that these people who are coming here illegally are being protected and that's not right. So they came here because they wanted to live in a place right. where and law is taken seriously, people are treated equally under Exactly, it. exactly. Ooh, yes. a bitter irony for them and for you. Is that how you feel as an immigrant? Well, definitely so. I mean, I, I'm, I'm really for law and order. I've been fighting for this, but when this situation in Rockville happened, it made me really upset because of the fact that a 14-year-old girl was not girl was not protected right. in the high school, and all the money that we in Montgomery County pay for our taxes, which goes to mostly the school, that they have a, they have a situation where they allow illegals to come into a high school at 17 and 18 illegal, don't speak English, and have an opportunity to do this kind of crime for a 14-year-old is really very, very disheartening. And there's one of the alleged perpetrators right there. I mean, look, most people who come to this country legally or illegally are not like this guy is alleged to be. Um, but the truth is it does not improve your school if a lot of people come who can't, for example, speak the language. I mean, it doesn't well, make the school better, does it? What they should have done is put him in some sort of remedial English and learn some English first. But what I don't understand is how t can two boys grab a 14-year-old girl and put her into the, the men's room and, and rape her as they did. And, and, and the, if you look at the police report, it's ridiculous what they did. I mean, rape is one thing, but it, it was just awful. And they tried to hold her face to keep her from screaming. I mean, this is in a school. How can 18-year-old, 19-year-old... But how did they wind up... How did an 18-year-old wind up in a ninth grade classroom? It's the policy of the Montgomery County School System. So you're really, at that point, you're just saying, we just don't care about education. That's not our goal, is to educate kids. I mean, if you're doing that, isn't that the message? They, yeah, they want to educate everybody, which is fine, but I don't think you need to put these kind of kids, illegal kids, any illegal kid, they're there as, as a criminal, as far as I'm concerned. If you're here as an illegal, you are here against the law, and that's a crime. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, well, you have an old-fashioned view of that. Well, I'm sorry, but that was kind of the promise when you came here, was it not? Yeah, and all of the ones that are waiting in line to come here legally. You know, I just spoke with the driver that brought me here. He said it, that his father took him eight years before he could bring his family here. Now, that's sad. And you see what happened here. You got some illegals. I don't know how they got here. Yeah. It's really very disheartening. Brigitte, you're, you're an articulate spokesperson for your point of view. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you. For that. One other immigration news illegal immigrants have made Michigan more vibrant by introducing a new sport there cockfighting. That highly illegal and abhorrent, by the way, practice remains popular in Mexico, so it's not a surprise that the feds uncovered a massive cockfighting ring in Mexico town. That's a new neighborhood in southwest Detroit. 86 people were arrested, along with hundreds of chickens. They were brought in, too. No surprise, many of the participants are not here legally. 
deportation hearings now scheduled for roughly 50 people who are involved. Welcome to your new country. Hope you're enjoying it.